All right, we're going to talk solving quadratic systems. And what we mean by this is any combination of squareds or perhaps linear. But we have circles, we've got ellipses, we've got hyperbolas, and we've got to be able to solve them to know where they intersect. And so same idea from when we were seeing how lines crossed. Uh, they could cross at one spot. They could be parallel they could be the same line, things like that, but now we have circles and so they could cross in multiple spots or they have ellipses crossing and they could cross in one, two, three, four spots. To all my classes, I realize I gave you longer notes. We're gonna get just to the meat of it. So linear combination, sometimes called elimination. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna combine these. There's an x squared in both equations and a y squared in both equations. So if we can multiply it by something, I'm going to multiply the top equation in order to cancel out the y. You can multiply it to cancel out the x. I'm just going to pick the y. So I'm going to multiply the top one by negative 3. And what that's going to get me is, first I'm going to have my original 4x squared plus 3y squared equals 24. And then this one I multiply by negative 3 on both sides. So negative 3x squared minus 3y squared equals negative 21. And you add 4x squared and minus 3x squared, so you just get x squared. And then these cross out, because they equal 0. And that was planned. And then 24 minus 21 equals 3. So usually we would say take the square root of both sides, and so x equals plus or minus root 3, but really x squared equals 3 is more useful to us, and so I'm going to take that. I'm going to take x squared equals 3 and plug it into x squared plus y squared equals 7. Take this, plug it into here, so 3 plus y squared equals 7. Because this is the second step. After you find x plus or minus root 3, sorry, we plug it back in to see what y is, and so we're going to have to square it anyways. So then if you subtract the 3, y squared is 4. So then y, if you take the square root of both sides, remember the plus or minus every time you take the square root. It's plus or minus 2. So we have, when x is root 3, y could be positive 2, or y could be negative 2. And also, when x is negative root 3, because when we square negative root 3, we also get 3, y could be 2, or y could be negative root 3, comma, negative 2. So why does this make sense? Well, what we have here is a circle with a radius of uh, root 7. So a little less than 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. So we've got a circle. We've got a radius here. Sorry, this is a an ellipse. And so if you divide by 24, you get x squared. 4 divided by 24 reduces to 1 sixth, plus y squared. 3 over 24 reduces to 8. And so that ellipse goes left and right, the square root of 6, which is um, more than 2, less than 3 more than 2, less than 3, and we go up and down 8, which is um, more than 2, less than 3, but more than our 7 here, and so our 7 is going to cross, and so we're going to get our, our crossing right here, here, and here, and here. It's a very small picture, but you get the idea. Here's our four points that crosses. All right. Next option, substitution. So we've got to solve for one of the variables. It's easiest to solve for in this one. So let's get the y by itself. Um, I'm going to add 3. So xy equals 3. So y equals 3 divided by x. I'm going to take that and plug it into my other equation. 4 times x squared minus 3 over x squared equals 5. So 4x squared minus 9 over x squared equals 5. 
And so the problem is, is there's an x squared in the denominator. So at this point in time, I get rid of the fraction by multiplying through by x squared. Multiply through by x squared, you get 4x to the fourth. x squared cancels out with the x squared on the bottom, so you just get 9. And then don't forget to multiply by the right-hand side, 5x squared. Now the whole purpose of this, now let's, we've got a quadratic, so let's move the 5x squared to the other side, 4x to the 4th, minus 5x squared, minus 9, equals 0. So, now we've got a factor. So we do the AC method, 4 times negative 9 is negative 36, and what multiplies to negative 36, and adds to 5, 4, and 9, so 4 and a negative 9. So we split up that middle term. If you need to see the AC method, um, just type in AC method into YouTube and you can find a couple videos on it. Um, but we split this up for the purpose of grouping. So then we get x squared that we can pull out. 4x squared minus 9. And in the second half, we can't pull anything out. So if you want to, some people write, like to write the, the 1 out front. The whole purpose in doing that was to get this the same. So we're going to move up here. 4x squared minus 9 times x squared plus 1 equals 0. And then this factors, this is a difference of 2 squares, so that factors into 2x plus 3. 2x minus 3. So we got to be good at factoring with this stuff again. Um, x squared plus 1 equals 0. By the way, if you're not very good at factoring, you can use quadratic formula, but realize that all of your solutions are for an x squared, and so you're going to probably have a plus or minus at the end. So 2x plus 3 equals 0. Subtract 3 divide by 2, x equals negative 3 halves. Same thing here, but that's going to be a positive 3 halves. And here, x squared plus 1 doesn't factor, and so if you see, if you subtract 1, you take the square root of both sides, you get plus or minus i. And so because it's plus or minus i, it's not going to show up in our graph, which is on a real number line. So we just ignore this, we throw it out. And now we take both of these and plug it in to our equation. We've already got solved it for y, so why not just go y equals 3 divided by negative 3 halves, which is the same as 3 times negative 2 thirds. 3's cancel out, you get negative 2. So negative 3 halves, negative 2 is one of our solutions. And we plug in 3 halves. Same thing happens except you flip it over and you get 3 times 2 thirds. A positive one. The 3's cancel, you just get 2. So negative 3 halves, positive 2. And that is your second option. So again, you've got linear combinations where you multiply the equation by something to cancel it out. Or you have substitution where you solve for one of the variables and plug it in. Now, sometimes this will be easier in the end, but I wanted to show you a more difficult problem just to refresh some of our, our other skills that we had. The goal at the end, too, is to be organized because we got two x's, and we had to know which y went with which x. So keep that in mind as well. Um, sorry, this three halves should be positive. And there is our final answer. Happy studying.